Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like to take better pictures in only 11 days, I created a free mini video course that you can sign up for right now at fronosphoto.com slash 11 days. Now let's get into the video. Jared Poland, fronosphoto.com and welcome to the user guide for the Nikon D7500. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how I personally would set up the menu and this entire camera, as well as show you what all of the buttons do. And also wanna let you know that down below, if you wanna skip past something, there is a table of contents. And before I get into the rest of this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel and give it a like if this helped you out. But now let's go through some of the basics. So let's start with where the battery goes. Right down here on the bottom is where the battery goes. It pops out just like that and here it is. Good recommendation with the battery is make sure that you fully charge it the first time you're going to use it. It's always good to get an extra battery, especially when you travel, just in case something happens to the first one, it's always good to have a backup. So it only goes in one way. Flip the door open, move that orange tab back, pop it in, you'll hear a click, shut the door, and you're good to go. The next thing you need to know is where does the memory card go? Right here on the side, you just press and slide to the left and the door flops open and this is where your SD card goes. So it goes right in here. You have one slot for an SD card. As a good recommendation, I like to say purchase good SD cards. Don't cheap out at this point and get some no-name China brand that you've never heard of or that is just super inexpensive because the last line of defense to your photos is your memory card. The last thing you wanna have happen is that the card just goes bad because you didn't get a good one. You spent all of this money on your camera, you went on an awesome vacation only to find out that your card went corrupt and all of your files are bad. Don't cheap out on the memory cards. The next thing I wanna show you how to do is put the lens on to the camera as well as take it off. So I'm gonna start with it off and I'll explain all of this in just a second. Right here inside of the camera is your mirror box and behind that is where your shutter is as well as your image sensor. You never wanna touch anything inside of this mirror box. Now also, it's a good recommendation, turn off the camera when you're changing lenses as well. Also keep it tilted down, especially if it's windy or if it's raining because you don't want anything getting up in there. But how do you put the lens on there? You see this white dot right here? Well, there's a white dot on the lens and there is also a white dot on the camera body. You wanna go ahead and line both of those up and then turn it, in this case, towards me. You hear a click and now it's locked in. Now, how do you take it off? Right here, there's a release button that you go ahead and press that, turn it the other way and then boom, it comes right off. So it's pretty simple to change lenses. You just wanna make sure that you line it up, you hear that click, and you're good to go. Now let's walk around the basic functions of the camera, how you turn it on and what all of the buttons mean. Simple, how do you turn it on? Just flick this switch right here, goes to on. If you flick it even further, that's where you get your Indiglow if you're in night. I actually don't call it Indiglow anymore. Do you remember those Indiglow watches? I was super cool when I had an Indiglow watch because I was like, guys, look at my Indiglow watch. But anyway, it's not Indiglow, it's just a backlight that helps you see the screen in lower light situations. Now the button right here in the middle, this is your shutter button. You press it halfway down to activate autofocus and then you press it all the way down to take a photo or you hold your finger down on it when you're shooting continuous and it will keep taking pictures. This button right here with the green dot, that is your plus minus button. That's for exposure compensation. You've got your ISO button in a great spot. That's what you hit to go ahead and change ISO from the lower numbers to the higher numbers, depending on the situation you're in, if you're not in full auto mode. You've got your record button for when you're shooting video, which I'll go into how to set up this camera for video and give you some tips for shooting as well. This is your top display. This is where you see the settings of your camera. You can see how many frames are left. Right now it says 8.4 thousand shots on a 64 gig uh, pro grade card. You can see the ISO. You can see how much battery you have left. Uh, you can see your metering modes. So this is where you see everything a lot of information, but you'll also see that same information on the back when you hit the info button and actually you'll see even more on the back of your LCD. So while we're here, might as well talk about this. This is your 3.2 inch LCD screen or maybe it's 3.0, doesn't really matter at this point, but this is a touch screen LCD. It also pops out like this, tilts down only to this far 
which isn't great if you're gonna hold it over your head, but if you wanna then go ahead and move it out this way, you can then shoot straight down and have your touch screen right here. You can just go ahead and press it back into the camera. You don't really have to worry about scratching this up too much. Of course, you don't wanna put your keys against it in your bag, that could cause it to scratch, but it's a really good and nice functioning touch screen. So moving up, this is your viewfinder. This is what you look through when you're gonna take pictures. You'll see the mirror flip out of the way when you go ahead and take a picture, you'll see like a quick blackout, uh, but you also inside of here see other settings like your exposure. You see your ISO, you see your shutter speed, your aperture, and you can see the moving of your light meter inside of here. This is something that I need to remind a lot of people of. This round dial here that moves, this is your diopter. So if you have bad eyes or if you use glasses, you're gonna wanna set your diopter so that it works for your eyes. That's a good thing, don't forget that is there. Up here, this is where you would put an external flash or anything else that goes in a hot shoe like a microphone, a Rode microphone, which is what we use, that can sit right here in the hot shoe. You also have a mode dial. So you can see there's a lot of modes. You've got manual, you've got aperture priority is A, shutter priority is S, and P is basically program mode. It's full auto, but it gives you more control over your settings. The green one, which is what the camera set on when you purchase it, is full auto, where the camera's gonna do everything for you. There's actually, this is a good one, the, uh, the no flash one, the flash where it's crossed out. That means if you're in a situation where you don't want the flash to pop up, you'll put this on, the flash isn't popping up, even if you hit this button on the side, which is the button to pop the flash up. Watch, I just had it pop up. Let me show you now how that works. We're gonna go ahead and turn this dial by pressing the center button. In order to turn the dial, you have to press the center button so it's not gonna automatically change or accidentally change in your bag. So turning, turning to the flash, hitting the button, and it's not popping up. No matter what I do, the flash is not gonna pop up. So if you're shooting a ballet or a recital and they say no flash, go into the no flash mode and it won't pop up anymore. Right here, you have scene modes. Those are the different scenes that the camera offers you. You can see those on the back of the camera. I'm not gonna break those down right here. U1 and U2. Uh, it's not actually the band. It doesn't start playing music once you go to U2, but U1 is user-defined settings. So say you wanna shoot at a specific setting for indoors. You would go ahead and lock that into U1, and then if you were shooting in outdoors in low light situations, well then maybe you would set U2 or set that to be your video functions. So you have that type of mode. And then last, you have effects. Not really sure what effects do because I personally would never use them, uh, but you, you get it. It's like filters, different things that you could use inside of the camera to get different effects in your images. So right below the mode dial, there is another dial with a button. In order to turn this sub dial, you will hold this button down and let me, let me do this right, right here. And then you can just go ahead and slide it. But let me explain to you what these buttons are. You've got S, that's for single shot. Remember when I said you will hold your finger down on the shutter button and it will continuously shoot? Well, if it's an S, it's only gonna shoot one frame every time you push the button. If you go over to CL, that's continuous low, meaning you can set it to two frames a second, three frames a second, four frames a second, that's up to you. If you go into continuous high, that means that you can shoot in the continuous mode for as many frames a second as the camera will allow you to do. Then moving on, you've got quiet mode, that's the Q, it's not quiet, listen to this, yeah, no, that's not much different, because listen, this is what it sounds like in regular. It sounds exactly the same, so don't even worry about quiet mode. You're not gonna be any quieter than if you shot regular. They also have quiet, continuous, meaning if you held your finger down on the button, it will slow down the amount of shots. You can't take the eight in a row or seven in a row, but it would take multiple frames in a row, sort of quiet, but not really, so people are gonna hear you shooting. This is your timer mode, so you can set that to two seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds. Uh, we'll show you that in the menu system later. And then you have mirror up, which is something if you're doing landscapes or long exposures, it will lock the mirror up so that the mirror won't flop down uh, and cause any shake inside of the camera. So turning around to the side front of the camera, right here, you've got the button to pop up your flash. Then you've got the one for bracketing. You would hit this button if you wanted to do different brackets with the flash or 
with multiple frames. Then you've got the emblem for the D7500. You also have an infrared uh, receptor right here where if you were using a remote, then this would be picked up right here in the front with the IR right there. Coming around to the side, you have AF and manual. So if you're in AF, that means you're in the autofocus mode. And if you wanna go into manual, you will move this switch right here. Now there's also a dial right here with some knipply things on there, kind of like braille. You will press this in and turn the sub dial and the command dials on the camera to change the autofocus modes that you're in. I'll show you that when we get into that section of the camera, uh, but really this is a good thing to remember. It's right on the side of the camera. So when you're holding the camera like this and you're gonna go ahead and press the button on the side and look through, that's how you can go ahead and change those settings. Now, while we're here on this side of the camera, if you went ahead and picked up the kit lens, which is the 18 to 140, which is a nice zoom range, you're gonna see on the side of the camera, you have the options to go from auto to manual. So that would allow you to go ahead and turn this dial, which is for controlling manual focus. And then also right here, you'll see VR, that stands for vibration reduction. On means it's gonna help you compensate for any shaking that you might add to the camera and allow you to shoot in lower light situations and hopefully still get sharp images of subjects that aren't moving. Now, while I say that, I wanna remind you that with vibration reduction, it allows you to shoot at slower shutter speeds, but that doesn't mean you're gonna freeze motion of somebody moving fast if you're still shooting at a slow shutter speed. It will just compensate for your shaking, which comes in handy all the time, so you may wanna leave it on if you have this option. So you leave it on or you leave it off, that is up to you. Now moving here to the side of the camera, this is where you have all of your different inputs. Behind this door, you've got a mic input. You have your USB port as well as HDMI. So it just flips open just like this, and you can see that's where your mic goes, your USB and your HDMI as well. That's if you wanted to plug it into the TV, you could go ahead and do that. Now the bottom one has a headphone jack as well as a plug for your remote control. You can get a remote for this camera to remote control it, or you could get a wireless one, which works really well with the infrared receivers on this camera. Moving to the bottom of the camera, we don't want to forget this. This is your tripod socket. This is what you're going to screw in the tripod plate so that you can put this on to a tripod. Now keep in mind, it's here. Don't forget to use it if you're gonna use it. So now on the back of the camera, you can see there are a lot of buttons. And let me give you a quick overview. This is your play button. You go ahead and press this. It's gonna play back your images. The one next to it is Oscar the Grouch, AKA the trash can button. That's how you delete images in the camera if you don't want to use them. Personally, I recommend not deleting anything on the camera. I save that for after the fact because I don't want to delete something by accident uh, that may have been a great image or a great video. So I really don't delete things on the camera. This is your menu button. This is your, ooh, it's a question mark and a lock. They have a question mark because I'll show you that it has a built-in user's guide inside the camera. You have a a magnifying glass that helps you zoom in on the image. The other one goes the opposite way so you can zoom out on an image. And then you have the info button. You'll also see that there's these white things printed. They're sub commands. So that's the other thing that that dial can operate like the white balance or the quality or changing the metering mode because that's what this one is. That means metering mode. So there's other ways, other things that you can change. It's a sub command dial. Moving on to the side, you've got your live view button. If you wanna go ahead and shoot holding the camera using just the LCD, which I don't always recommend, you would hit live view. That will pop the mirror out of the way and then you can see what the camera sees right here on the back of the screen. Now, if you wanted to do live view stills, you would have the switch on this camera, which is live view for stills, or the video is when you wanna get into shooting video, you go into video, you hit live view, and you're good to go. You also have an info button on the side. When you hit that, info pops up on the back of the screen. This right here, this is a light right there. That's a light on the camera. So when you take pictures, you're gonna see that this is what turns on to show you that it's writing data to the card. This is your D-pad, your up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, B, A, select, start. It doesn't play Contra, though that joke is probably old, but you probably never heard me say it before, so that's a bonus. But this is how you can move around your image. This is how you can hit OK when you wanna select something and also lock this command dial so it won't do anything if you switch this switch to lock. 
right here. This is your back command dial, which is set to control your shutter speed. So you change this for shutter speed, and then the one in the front, you can turn this dial, is going to change the aperture of the lens. So there's a couple more buttons that really aren't that important, you're not gonna use very often. Right down here, there's a function two button. It may be set to your depth of field preview, which is something I've never used even when I shot film, but you would just press this button or you could cha change it to do some other operation, which I can show you in the camera. There's also another one hidden in here that Steven, my camera guy, may be able to see. That's another function button. And then right here, this lamp right here will help you in lower light, throw out a beam of light to help you with autofocus. Now I personally turn that off because I don't want to distract the subject that I'm shooting or if I'm trying to photograph somebody that I don't want them to know that I'm photographing them, I don't want that light blinking so that they see it. But that really is it guys. I know that's a lot of information but I think the first time you're going through your camera this is definitely going to help you out so now it's time to move on to the next section. Let me jump in here real quick and say, now that you have a lot of camera gear, how do you keep track of everything that you have so you know what you have and what it's worth? Well, I created a free app called My Gear Vault, which is the best way to do everything I just said. So go download it for free right now for iOS and Android at mygearvault.com. Now let's get back to the video. So now let's go through the menu system so I can explain what each menu item means or the important ones and then tell you how I personally would set it up. Now if you see this cable coming out of the side of the HDMI of the camera, that's because it's going right into a thing called an Atomos, which is an external recorder so that we can record the screen so it looks good in the video that you're watching. So the thing I'm gonna do right now is hit menu. Now because you have a touch screen, that means you can sit here and just touch your way through the menu if you'd like to do that or use the jog dial and just hit down or over or whatever it is that you need to do. But now that you have a touch screen, it's a nice option to have. I don't use it all the time, but it's good to quickly get from point A to point B. The first menu that we see right here is called the playback menu. Now I'm gonna arrow over to where it says delete. Now down on the bottom left hand corner, do you see that question mark bubble that showed up? If you go ahead and hit that, it's gonna tell you, you basically have an explanation or a definition of whatever button it is that has that question mark available. So it's always a good resource to just go ahead and click here. You know that user manual that came in the box? Yeah, put it back in the box, never read it because everything's right here and you could always come back to this video for more information. So I don't do the delete. You're, you're gonna see me skip around a couple of things that I don't find to be important. You could always read the question mark thing when you're going through it there. Playback folder, I leave it on all. Hide images, I don't hide any images. Playback display options is something that's pretty important. So I'm gonna go ahead and click into there. And right now, none of them are checkmarked. So we can click the question mark and it says focus point. The selected focus point or focus point used to select focus is displayed in red in the basic photo info display. So you could read what each one means. I go, I'll show you which ones I turn on. I turn on focus point. I also turn on none because that shows me just the image itself with no other information there. Highlights, which I'm gonna show you in just a second. I don't use the RGB histogram. I like shooting data. Uh, and overview, let's see what that one is. So I go ahead and touch that to check the box. I hit the OK button, that locks it in. Now let me show you that in one of the images. So I'm gonna hit the play at the top and you can see, let me find a better picture. Right here you can see that if I hit up, I can go ahead and change the different display options. So on the information display here, you can see all of my settings. Manual at 1 60th at 4.8, the ISO is 1600, and 50 millimeters is the focal length that I was at. This right here, the spiky thing, that's called your histogram. That would take way too long to explain, but generally speaking, if there's a spike in the middle, that means that your exposure is pretty much spot on. But I personally don't go by the histogram too often. It does come in handy depending on what situation you're in, but that goes in a little deeper that I'm not gonna go into right now. If I hit up again, you can see more information, more information, more information as you hit up. And then this is the, this should be highlights, but let me see if I've got any that, yep, you see the blinky blinks? That just shows that in that area, there's no more detail, it's blown out. That doesn't mean you did anything wrong, that just means that it's 
there's no detail in that area. So like a bright sky or the sun, but all that matters is if you got your exposure right, that's what matters. If I hit to the right or the left, you can see that I can go through the images, or if I go ahead and swipe, you can go ahead and swipe through the images that way. So let's go back into menu here. We've got image review, I turn that off. I don't want the image coming up every time I take a photo. So if you wanna take a photo and then look at the image, well, don't, that's not a good idea. Take your photos, check them after you're done shooting. Um, you know, every once in a while, take a look. But I find that image review is really not great to have because if you take a picture and then the LCD comes on and it's too bright in your face, it's just a distraction. It's really simple to go ahead and hit the play button yourself. After delete, I don't even touch this one. Auto image rotation, let's see what that says. Uh, record camera orientation when taking photographs. Images taken when off is selected will not be rotated for display during playback. So if you want your images to show up going the right direction in the computer, you leave this on. Now, right, right now, rotate tall is on. Let's see what that means for my verticals. I have a vertical shot in here. There, you see how it's rotate tall? Right now it's not taking up the entire screen. I don't like that. I wanna see this entire image. So under the menu, I turn rotate tall off, and then let me show you what it looks like. Now you turn your camera and you can utilize the entire screen to watch it vertically. That's something that I go ahead and set right there. Moving on, slideshow, don't worry about. Rating, don't worry about that either, in my opinion. Uh, and then select to send to smart device. This is if you wanna go ahead and use the Bluetooth or the Wi-Fi to transfer files to a mobile device. So moving on, we've got this menu, which is the photo shooting menu. So reset photo shooting menu? No, because when you're setting it up, you don't need to reset it, it's fresh. Uh, you probably never will hit reset, to be honest with you, because once you lock your settings in, you kind of want to keep them there without resetting it. Storage folder, I don't change this. It's just called D7500. File naming, it starts off as DSC. So you'll see DSC in your file name. You could always go ahead and change that. Like for me, it could be... They don't set this up as a QWERTY keyboard, which is absolutely stupid, but you can simply type this, which is easy. I could be like, uh, P... O L, you know, for my name, uh, my last name, then I go ahead and hit OK. And now every file will say poll 001. And you can see it will go up to a thousand characters, which actually is pretty good. So it will reset when you get to 9,999. When you take the next picture, it's going to go back to zero at that point. Um, just that's how it works. Flash TTL, I leave that on TTL. Choose image area. So DX is what this camera is. It's a cropped sensor. So any lens that you put on this camera, you multiply the focal length by 1.5X. So you just multiply 18 by 1.5 and you get what that focal length is. That's just the equivalent to what it would be on a 35 millimeter camera. Now they also give you this option to crop even further, 1.3X. Now you're cropping down on the sensor inside of the camera, which means you have less megapixels that you're working with. But if you wanna get more reach without cropping later, you could go ahead and go into the 1.3 mode. I don't think you ever need to do it because I just think that if you need more reach, you could go ahead and crop it later within reason. So I'm gonna go back here. Uh, image quality, this is important. Uh, normal, if you're just gonna shoot in JPEG, do yourself a favor and shoot in JPEG fine. The highest quality one, you don't wanna buy a camera like this and then dumb it down to lower quality. So JPEG fine would be fine. Image size, JPEG fine would be fine. Did you hear that? That's right, JPEG fine would be fine. Uh, image size, large, leave it on the largest. Don't read anybody else's website that says shoot JPEG small or JPEG medium. Don't worry about it. Memory cards are really inexpensive. As you see right now, I get 4.2 thousand. So 4,200 images on this 64 gigabyte card is a ton in JPEG mode. Now we're moving down to what's called NEF or RAW recording. As you see on my shirt, it says I shoot RAW. That's a file format. So what is RAW? Well, it's all of the raw data that the camera captures. It puts that right on to the memory card. So think about it like the raw ingredients. If you had a cake and you burnt the cake, you had the eggs, the flour, the oil, the whatever else that went into it, and you burnt it. Well, that's like a JPEG. It's a baked file. You can't go back after the fact and make great changes to it because it's baked in. 
But if you burnt your cake and you had all the ingredients, the raw ingredients, you could start all over again and process it again and bake it again and get it perfect. Raw files give you more data and more control, but it also takes up more space on a memory card. Uh, I shoot everything in raw. When you're first starting out, my recommendation would be to shoot raw plus JPEG. Save those raw files for the future so that you have them in case you ever want to go back and start to edit them because you need to open them in something like Adobe Lightroom because you have to process each one of those files. A JPEG file is baked and done as soon as you shoot it. So when I set it, I do, let's see what it gives me for compression. Uh, it says lossless compressed or compressed. I'm gonna go with lossless compressed because I don't wanna lose data. So it's compressing it, making it a little smaller, but not losing any information. Net recording bit depth, always gonna shoot with 14 bit for bit depth. Uh, I don't wanna shoot, dumb it down. If you're gonna shoot raw, you better shoot it 14 bit and keep it at the higher bit rate. Now I know this sounds like a lot of information, but we're just, again, going through it one time so that you understand it, uh, so you get a good understanding. ISO sensitivity settings, you can go in here and manually set your ISO. You can do auto ISO sensitivity controls. You can set maximum sensitivity. Uh, I'm extra sensitive sometimes, so you know I wanna turn down the crying when I'm watching the notebook or something, so I turn down the sensitivity level so I don't cry as much. That's an option, um, but yeah. I set the ISO myself. If you're somebody who just wants to set it to auto in the green mode on top of the camera, the camera's gonna do all the work for you uh, and then you don't have to worry about it. But if you wanna go into manual modes, you can control that yourself. White balance, I leave this always on auto for what I'm shooting when I'm shooting stills. The reason I leave it on auto, because I shoot raw, you have more power to change the white balance after the fact. Now when you shoot JPEG, it's much harder to make changes to the files. You can do some good edits these days because the files are much better, but you have more control when you're doing raw. It's still something I will leave on auto because the camera does a good job getting your settings right. Set picture control. This is where you can set auto, standard, neutral, vivid, monochrome, portrait, landscapes, oh my God, and flat. There's lots of different options. So remember that your JPEGs are gonna save with this picture style. So if you have vivid picture, then you take a picture, it's gonna be more vivid. You can't change that after the fact after you shoot the JPEG. Now, if you shoot vivid when you're shooting with a raw file, well, it's just gonna give you a preview on the back of the camera of it being vivid, but when you bring it into the computer to edit, it's still just gonna be the raw data and it will wipe away any of the picture styles from the camera. And that brings up a good thing here. If you wanna shoot in monochrome, which is basically black and white, if you shoot JPEG, the final image is gonna be black and white. If you're shooting raw and shooting monochrome, the preview is gonna be black and white, but in the computer, you still have all of the color data so you could go back. And when you're shooting video, whatever your picture style is set to is what your video is going to be set to when you capture it. So if it's monochrome video, you're only gonna have black and white video because that's what your picture style was selected to. Manage picture control, let's actually read what that one is. Adjust custom picture controls. Yeah, you guys can go in and read that one yourself. Color space, I leave sRGB. Active delighting is what I leave off. I'll tell you what that is. Improves the level of detail in highlights and shadows are areas under high contrast conditions. I turn this off. Uh, if I shoot raw, it's not gonna affect my raw file, but it's going to affect your JPEG. It's something you could try out. I personally leave it off. Long exposure noise reduction. I leave off as well. I don't like anything being on noise reduction. I wanna take care of all of that after the fact. I don't worry about noise reduction. Noise reduction, what it's doing is smoothing out the image and it's gonna make it look less sharp. So I turn it off altogether. Same thing, oh, okay. High ISO noise reduction is set to normal. You've got high, you've got low, you've got off. I personally set it to off because I rather have a sharp image uh, with some grain or noise in there than to have a smoother image that looks just not good and not sharp. So that's personal preference, I turn that one off. Moving on, we've got vignette control. This is something I just leave on normal. But remember, again, if you're shooting raw, none of this will affect your raw files. 
Auto distortion control, I leave off. Flicker reduction, this is actually an interesting setting. The shutter is released when the effects of flicker are at their lowest. Shutter release timing is affected by external factors, resulting in a tendency to increase shutter lag and a reduced frame advance rate. Now, where does this come in handy? If you're shooting in a gymnasium with those sodium vapor or the sodium halide lights that flicker, the camera will shoot between flickers, which means it may slow down when you shoot it. So you may press the button and it may be a split second after you press the button that you'll get the shot, but you won't get any of that bad flicker in there. It's actually a good function to have even if you're gonna shoot, say, a TV monitor or a screen, it's gonna help cut down on the flicker because it's gonna shoot between the flicks. It's only gonna shoot on the flax. Flick and flack, I, I, I don't know. But anyway, back to the menu system. Remote control mode, MLL3, that's the remote that you can purchase. So I'm not gonna go into that if you didn't buy it, but it's a good wireless remote to have to wirelessly control your camera when you're gonna shoot. Uh, auto bracketing set, I leave this where it is. Multiple exposure. It's gonna stay off. I'm rarely ever gonna do a multiple exposure. High dynamic range is definitely off in my camera. You can read about that as well. Interval timer shooting. This is pretty cool because you can set it to say shoot 999 images split amongst every second. It will shoot one every second. Yeah, you've got an intervalometer built in here to shoot timers. This is good for like time-lapse photos. Just know that after the fact, you're going to have to go ahead and put them into a computer program to make it look like moving video. But it's a cool feature that's built in that you don't find in most cameras. Moving on to the next menu, going to go over here to the movie shooting menu. We've got reset movie shooting menu. Don't need to do that. File naming, you already saw how to make those changes. Choose image area. Same thing. You've got your DX and your 1.3x crop mode. Just remember if you go into 1.3x crop mode that you will get more bang for your buck, you're gonna bring things in a little closer. If you go into 1.3x, you have to multiply by 1.5x, then 1.3x to figure out your focal length, but you'll just see all of this on the back of your screen. So what you see is what you're gonna get. So I'm gonna leave it in DX for right now. Frame size and frame rate. So right off the rip, it's set to 1080 at 60 frames a second. 60 frames a second is kind of similar to what you see on broadcast television. It moves really fast. It's what sports are shot in. But if you want that cinematic movie feel, that's where you're going to go down here into 10, 1920 by 1080. So that's 24 frames a second. That's going to give you that cinematic feel. But this camera also has 4K. 4K at 24 frames a second is what I would shoot if I was gonna go ahead and shoot 4K in this camera. So you have that option for 4K video. So moving back down, we've got movie quality. I'm always gonna leave this on high. I don't know why you would ever dumb down your movie quality. You've got movie file type, I leave it on MOV. ISO sensitivity settings, you can do the maximum. You could do ISO control mode manual where you can do it. ISO sensitivity mode manual, which is just already set anyway. So yeah, there's not really much that you need to worry about there. So let's go back into the menu. White balance. Remember, whatever white balance you set for your video is what you're going to see. So if you have it set for a bright sunny day and it makes it a little more warmer and it really wasn't meant to be warm, well, that's what you're stuck with. So you want to make sure that your white balance is either set manually for where you're shooting or you leave it on auto because again, auto does a very nice job. So right here you can set your picture controls. Earlier I said you set your picture control for your photos and that's going to affect your video. Uh, that actually is the case in the Canons not so much in the Nikons. You can actually go ahead here and set your picture style just for shooting photos or video, or it actually says same as photo settings. But I don't want it to be same as photo settings, so I'm gonna be like, I wanna shoot with neutral. So then I can go ahead and have that set for neutral. And you could make individual tweaks if you wanted to go ahead and do that, and you would hit OK to make those changes. Manage picture control, we know what that is. I know I said we know what that is. But you can change and reload picture styles right there. Active delighting off. High ISO noise reduction, I want this off as well. Uh, flicker reduction, leaving that on auto. Microphone sensitivity, you can leave it on auto. You can do manual sensitivity, or you could turn the microphone off altogether if you don't want to record audio. Um, if you were going to go ahead and put external microphone in here, you would plug it into the side, and then you can control that yourself if you would like to. Moving down, we've got frequency response. Uh, I'm going to leave it on wide. That's where it defaults to. I leave it on that. Wind noise reduction, I personally leave that off. 
Then we've got electronic VR. That's where the camera is going to digitally uh, act as vibration reduction. It's also going to crop down on your image just a little bit. This is something that I leave off for the most part, especially if I have a VR lens. Now the last thing right here is time-lapse movie. This means that you could take multiple frames and then the camera's gonna go ahead and turn it into a movie. Now, I'd have to play with this a little more to see how we get into it. I think I have to have live view on in order to, to activate it, but that's something that you're gonna wanna play with because it is a really, really cool feature to do time-lapse movies. You're seeing one right now that looks pretty cool. It can do some effects like that. Moving on to the next menu, we've got custom setting menu. This is another long one. I told you this is gonna be a long video. Woo! There's so much information to go through, but let's go into the autofocus area. We've got AFC priority selection. I leave this on release. Let's just read what that means. Choose the operation performance when the shutter release button is pressed. Release, the shutter can be released even when the camera is not in focus. Focus, the shutter can only be released when the camera is in focus. So you may say, well, why wouldn't you put it on focus all the time? Well, I've noticed in the past that even when I knew I was in focus and it said I wasn't, that it actually was and it wasn't shooting and I was missing things. So I'm just pretty good with knowing where my focus should be. So I leave it on release myself. Moving on to the AFS priority selection. What does this mean? Focus versus release. Ah, AFS means single focus. When you press your finger halfway down on the shutter button, it's gonna lock the focus in. This means that it will not shoot if it's not in focus. This one I like to have set to focus. Focus tracking with AE lock. I leave that the way that it is with AF. Number of focus points. I leave this to 51 so I can independently select the focus points that I want. Uh, let's see, store point orientation. I don't even know what the heck that, I know what it means, but let's read it. Choose separate focus points for vertical and horizontal orientations. Uh, don't worry about this. Just leave it the way that it is. AF activation. Choose whether the camera focuses when the shutter release button is pressed halfway. Enable the camera focus when the shutter release button is pressed. Of course we want that on. We want that on because you want the focus to focus when you press the button halfway down. Moving on, we've got focus point wrap is on off. I like to put this one on on. What this means is that when you have your focus point get all the way to the right, if you hit right again, it's gonna move over to the left. It's just quicker for getting your focusing points where you want them to be. Focus point options. Let's see what options we have. Focus point illumination, auto, manual focus on. So I like to leave this on on. I want my focus points always on inside the camera. That means they're gonna light up red. That's a good thing. I wanna be able to see where my focus point is. So I don't put it on auto because that's gonna change if you're in lighter or brighter or darker, it's gonna change the brightness of that. So I go ahead and leave that where it is. Uh, built in AF assist illuminator. This is what I was talking about earlier that could distract people. I turn this off because I don't want it coming on. ISO sensitivity, leave it at one third. EV steps, one third. Easy exposure compensation, leave that off. Matrix metering, on the way that it is currently center weighted. If you're ever gonna go into center weighted metering, I leave it on eight all the time. Uh, fine tune, optimal exposure, I don't bother with that. Look, if I don't say, if I say I don't bother with it, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't use it. You can read up on it, just hit the uh, question mark in the camera. It will tell you all about it and you can test it out. I'm just going through the things that I personally use. Uh, shutter release button, AE lock is off. I don't even know what the heck that one means. On half press, exposure locks when the shutter release button is pressed halfway. That definitely is off. It's, I love having that built into the camera so that I can read what everything is. Some of this stuff is definitely confusing. Standby timer. What the heck is that infinite button meaning? No limit or standby? I, I'm just gonna leave it where it is. Self timer, this is something you may use. You can set it to 10 seconds. You can set it to five, 10, and 20 seconds and number of shots. This is cool. This means that you could set it, I believe, up to nine. It says it right here at the bottom. So if you go back here, it's set to 10 seconds. Where this would be cool is if you're doing a group shot, big group shot. You're gonna press the button, you're then gonna run in, get into the group shot, and if you have it set between two and nine extra frames, it's gonna count down to 10, take a picture, and it's gonna wait a half a second, and then take another picture, wait a half a second, take another picture, up to nine frames if that's what you said. It's good if people are gonna blink. So let's move on to the next thing. Monitor off delay. This is just different timers. You can set the monitor to go off after 10 seconds, after a minute, or never turn off. It's a good way that you could save battery. We actually have it set to never go off so it doesn't mess up our recording. 
Uh, remote on duration, one minute. Uh, CL mode for shooting speed. This means that if you're in CL on the top of the camera, you can set it to one frame a second, you can set it to two frames a second, all the way up to seven frames a second. It's good to set it somewhere in the middle so it's not exactly the same as continuous high. Maximum continuous release means it will shoot 100 photos in a row. Exposure delay mode off, I don't even know what the heck that means either. Delay shutter release until one to three seconds after the mirror is raised. Oh, well, it, uh, that's, that's good. Thank you, Manuel, in the camera for explaining that to me. So if you're gonna be on a tripod and you're shooting something with uh, long exposure, if you just press the shutter button and the mirror flipped up and it started recording uh, and getting those images, you're gonna get some shake going on there. So if you delay it to three seconds, you press the button, it gives the, the, the tripod time to settle, and then it starts shooting. Electronic front curtain shutter, I leave off. File number sequence, I leave on. I always want it counting down or counting the photos every time I take it. Viewfinder grid display, if you wanna see a grid display in your viewfinder, this is where you would turn it on, which is so much better than back in the day when you literally need to crack open the camera and put a different screen in there. Now it's just built in digitally and that's great. ISO display, you could leave this on or off. LCD illumination, same thing, on or off. Now we're moving into flash sync speed. I just leave all of this exactly where it's at. Bracketing, same thing. Custom control assignment. This is where you would go in to set all of those different custom function buttons. This is good to play around with. You could just see a picture of where they are on the back of the camera or on the front of the camera, and that's so that you can set it to wherever you want to set it. Go play with that to see if there's different uh, settings you like. Now the OK button, this is what I like to, to go ahead and set. In playback mode, I don't want to hit the OK button and have it show thumbnail. I want it to zoom all the way in, and I want it to be one to one magnification because I want to zoom in and make sure everything is focused. So now if I go into playback menu and I go ahead and I tap on this image and I hit the center OK button, it zooms all the way in one to one, which helps me see if my focus is spot on. That's a setting that I definitely always change. Uh, custom command dials, I leave it where they're at. Release button to use dial, I leave this exactly where it is. Same thing re with reverse indicators and custom control assignment. This is where you can go ahead and change more of the custom functions. Moving into what I like to call the wrench menu, but they call it setup menu. You got info display, I go ahead and leave this on auto. Auto info display, again, auto is perfectly fine. Info display, auto off. Now I have this set to off right now because what actually happens is if I wave my hand over the proximity sensor in the viewfinder, it will go ahead and turn off the info display because it doesn't need to waste that battery power because it knows your eye is up to the camera. So I go ahead and set this to off anyway because I don't really want my info display on for the most part uh, when I'm shooting. So if I don't want it on, I would turn it, turn it from on to off. But try it out for yourself. AF fine tune, it's not something you're gonna mess with right off the bat. Clean image sensor, this is, you would go into clean image sensor if you have dust on the image sensor, you would run this option and it would try to do its best job to clean off the image sensor. Sometimes it works well, other times it doesn't, but that's where it is. Lock mirror up for cleaning. If you're ever gonna clean your own sensor, this is where you would come in to lock it up. Image dust off reference, something I never touch either. Image comment, this is where I go ahead and attach a comment. So you could input a comment like, my name, I could put my name in here, you go ahead and type that in, you would go ahead and hit okay. So let me just type something in, we got J, K, joking, that's where I'll leave it. I hit okay, then I'd wanna attach this, meaning it will save in the metadata of the image file. I would go ahead and hit okay to attach, hit done, and that's gonna be attached. Copyright info, turn that on, same exact thing. Copyright, Jared Poland, Frono's photo, you could put the year in there, it's gonna save that information in. There's no reason you shouldn't have this on, I would turn that on so that all of your files have your name in them. Beep options, yep. I have the beep either on or off. I like to have it on and the volume, wow. You can hear how loud and annoying that is. I like to have it on to make sure that when I'm in AF single shooting that, the, uh, that I hear when I'm in focus because that's what the beep means. So for now, I'll just leave it in two and hit okay in the pitch. Swing and a miss. That's the pitch. Now, you could change it to high, you could change it to low. Um, it's all dependent upon your ears. Let's go back. We've got touch controls on, because I want to use the back of the screen to touch things. Flash warning on. What is that? Let's read that. 
Choose whether the flash ready indicator blinks in the viewfinder in P, S, A, and M exposure modes to warn that the light is poor, oh, whatever. I don't need you to warn me, I'm turning you off. HDMI, location data, um, we can skip past these right now. Assign remote WR function buttons, that's off as well. Airplane mode, that's off. That means if you're using the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth, it can turn that off on an airplane. You're probably not gonna do that, but you're also probably not trying to send photos to your phone up there. Please stay in your seat until the bell dings and don't jump up. Moving on, we've got connect to smart device. That's if you're using SnapBridge, you can go ahead and use that. Same thing with send to smart device. You've got your Wi-Fi settings, your Bluetooth settings, uh, conformity marking, that's just the stuff that you'll never need. It just needs to be there for, I guess, legal purposes. Battery info is important. It shows me that I have 76% of the battery left. Number of shots is 17 that I've taken. Every time you take one video, it's gonna count as one shot. That's what the camera will see. And then battery age, zero to four. That just means how fresh your battery is. The older it gets, the more it's gonna wear down. It won't hold a charge as long. So that's a good function right there. Ah, slot empty release lock. This means that right now it's set that if I do not have a memory card in the camera, I can take a picture. I don't want that. Why would I want to take a picture if I don't have a card in the camera? So I go ahead and hit release lock and now it's locked. Save load settings. If you have multiple D7500s, you could set up one of them, save the settings that you took the time to set up, and then go ahead and put it back into another camera and have the same exact settings from one camera to the next. Reset all, we're not gonna do that because we just set everything. Firmware version, this is where you would go to reset firmware if you had firmware updating to do, which they do maybe once or twice in the lifetime of a camera. Moving now to the retouch menu, I never retouch anything in the camera, so I'm skipping that. And then we've got my menu. This is where you can add something. Let's say uh, movie shooting. I wanna put in frame rate and size, so I hit that, and I go ahead and hit choose my position. Well, it's the only one there, and it saved it. Now right here, I've got frame size and file uh, and, and frame rate. I can get right to that in my menu. This is also the things I put in there, my battery info, because I always wanna quickly get there, uh, your settings for RAW versus JPEG. If you wanna get there, you can have that. But really, guys, that is the entire menu system on the back of the camera, and now, we'll move to the next section. Now let me cut in here again real quick to say if you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Now, let's finish up this video. Now let's move on to the info display that you'll see on the back of your screen. This is an important thing because this is where you control everything by the buttons on the camera. So right here you can see we've got manual, it's set to manual. Now if I was gonna go ahead and switch this, watch what happens. Turning the top dial to A for aperture priority, you can see that it switches. So you can see everything that you're doing right here. I'm gonna go back to manual. Right here you see 1 50th of a second. As I turn the back dial, you can see that my shutter speed is going higher as I turn it to the right. As I turn it to the left, it's going lower. As I turn the front indicator dial, it's going from F4 all the way up to 5.6, 6, 6 3. This is changing my aperture going higher, cutting back on the amount of light, and lower lets more light in. Moving on to the hand that is waving at you, it's not saying, hi, look at me, look at me. That actually means that VR is on. So on the lens, if I turn VR off, it goes away. I turn VR on, it stays on. The musical note means that the sounds are on for touch controls and also the beep, you'll hear that sound. You've got your indicator for how much battery life you have left. The right here, the minus to the plus with the zero in the middle, that is your meter, your light meter. So generally speaking, you see as it's getting to the middle, technically, that would mean that the exposure is now right based on the light meter. Now, if you wanna shoot manual, a good rule of thumb is if you put the meter right there in the middle at zero and you shoot, then the exposure should be pretty darn close. Play with it, see what happens, but that's what you do. 
ISO is set to uh, 1600. Now, if I went ahead and hit ISO up top, which is right here, you can see that it's telling me what's gonna happen. I could go to auto ISO sensitivity, or by turning the back, I'm changing ISO. It's really informative. The camera tells you everything you need to do right there on the back. Now I wanna move right to here where it says AFA. Now AFA means the camera is basically autofocus auto. It's gonna select the autofocus mode for you between continuous focus, which means it's always gonna focus, or single, meaning it's gonna lock in and change. I do not like AFA, I wanna to set to control that myself. So remember, over here on the side of the camera, as I press that button in like I showed you earlier, if I turn the back dial, it's gonna change the focus mode. That's AF single, that's AF continuous, then back to AFA. Here's what AFC means. It means continuous. As long as you hold your finger halfway down on the button, it's gonna continuously focus. So if you're tracking a subject, it's gonna continually focus on them. Now if we go to AFS, that's single focus. This is generally used for objects or subjects that aren't going to be moving. You press the button halfway down, the focus locks in. As long as your finger is pressed down on the shutter halfway, if you move, the focus is not shifting like in continuous. So if you move forward, if you move back, you're gonna need to refocus so that your focus is right on each time. So you're gonna wanna use these modes depending on what you're shooting. Now you saw if I turn the front dial, you can see that the AF area mode changes as well. That's gonna be auto. If it's a full box completely filled in, that's auto. Now if we go to continuous, you can select different modes. That's gonna be the center point, that's gonna be nine different point AF, 21 point AF, 51 point AF, 3D, which is say if you're shooting a subject that's moving so fast and you can't move your focusing point, the 3D focus is gonna do a pretty good job finding where the focus should be. And that is back to auto right there. So now continuing on the back of the camera, we can see that we are in single shot. If I was to go and change the dial, check this out, change this top command dial. Now we're in CL, which is continuous low, that's three frames a second. Continuous high is showing me eight frames a second. Quiet mode, we know isn't quiet. Moving to the right, we can see that the picture style is set to auto. We've got auto white balance. This little thought bubble is not you getting a text message. That means that image comment is on, so that's gonna save your name or the copyright information that you had. Right here, it says fine large. That means you're shooting JPEG fine in the largest file, uh, and it's not shooting raw. Uh, and then right here, you've got 4.2 thousand or 4,200 images left to shoot. And that's the back of the camera right there. Moving on to live view for video. Let me show you how this works. We go here on the back of the camera and as long as the switch is showing the video camera, I go ahead and hit live view and now you see my foot and my shoe. These are all birds. Those are the shoes that I'm wearing right now. They're nice and comfortable. So on the screen, you can see that it says 29 minutes and 59 seconds. That's how much video you will get continually if you hit record. The limit is 29.59 on DSLRs. We don't need to get into why, but that's a lot of time to get when you're shooting. You can see that it says 1080 at 60 frames a second. It's in DX mode. You can see all of the other settings around the top. You can also go ahead and touch things on the screen. Like if I wanna get my focus, you see how the box is red? If I touch it, it's gonna go ahead and autofocus and make it green. Green means that it's now in focus. Now continuous autofocus in the Nikons is not that good. You're gonna see that hunting and pecking like it did right there. You see how it shifts in and it shifts out? That's what you're gonna see with their autofocus. So it may not be the best for when you're shooting subjects that are moving quite a lot for video, but it's still a very good video shooting camera. You can see that we're in auto levels for the microphone. You can see the auto levels changing. You can see your exposure down here at the bottom. And then if I hit the info button, it pulls up this other sub menu, DX. Oh, let's say I wanna make a change here. You could change that right there. The, the quality you want off, what's that active delighting, microphone, this is where you change the sensitivity. You can change the monitor brightness off. There's a lot that you can change here, but when you're ready to shoot, you just come back here, you hit the record button, which is right up top, and boom, you can see we're now recording some awesome cinematic stuff. Like here's Steven, say hi Steven, and then I just focused on him, move it back to here, you can see that the time is clicking down. I hit stop recording. 
and now it stopped recording. And that's it guys. It's pretty darn easy to shoot that video. And I know that this is a long video walkthrough, but it's certainly gonna help you out. If you did like this video, please hit the subscribe button so you can check out all the videos that I make when they come out. There's a huge archive of videos from the past that are gonna help you out. There's a lot of playlists that I've put together for you, including the best of the best, which has what I think are the best, most informative videos that are in there. We've got quick tips. There's a ton of different videos for you to check out. So leave a comment down below, hit that like button, hit the subscribe like I just said, and that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you very much for watching this. I hope it helped you out. And that's where I'll leave it. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya. To check out a playlist of really good videos, you can go ahead and click on the screen where that showed up. As well as if you want to see a real world review of me using this camera shooting tennis, well, go ahead and click that on the screen as well. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't done so. And that's it. Go ahead, click something. You'll enjoy it.